Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, TSP Rav Shiva. So today we're going to take a look at uh, what's going on here. They basically had an, uh, I guess, Barack Obama made an address of the Israeli uh, Hamas war, Israel, Israel and Palestine, of unfair, by just poking and saying things about him that I think that they didn't really get the full context of what everything actually means. So it's kind of strange to me that that they actually were allowed to do this in some way. I just think it's unfair, a lot of things I'm seeing recently. But let's take a look in here. Let's see. If there's any chance of us being able to act constructively to do something, it will require an admission of complexity and maintaining what on the surface may seem contradictory ideas. That, that what Hamas did was horrific and there's no justification for it. And what is also true is that the, the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is, is unbearable. And what is also true is that there is a history of the Jewish people that may be dismissed unless your grandparents or your great grandparents or your uncle or your aunt tell you stories about the madness of anti Semitism. And what is true is that there are people right now who are dying who have nothing to do with what Hamas did, and what is true, right? I mean, we can go on for a while. And the problem with the social media and trying to TikTok activism and trying to debate this on that is you can't speak the truth. You can pretend to speak the truth. You can speak one side of the truth. And in some cases, you can try to maintain your moral innocence but that won't solve the problem. And so if you want to solve the problem, then you have to take in the whole truth. And you then have to admit nobody's hands are clean, that all of us are complicit to some degree. I look at this and I think back, what could I have done? Or right, before he goes there, um, I just want to say that uh, everything that we're seeing and everything that he's saying is extremely valid. Um, it's valid in more than one way. I think that a lot of people don't seem to uh, realize not just the depth, but the complexity of what he's saying about truth. And I'm going to, you know, because they do call me the spiritual philanthropist. So I have to break it down in the only way that I understand. And uh, of course, you know, I'm taking, I'm doing a program now to get a degree in physics as well. It'll be my fourth degree, my last two in chemical substance abuse and one in, in majoring in English. But um, I'm just throwing that in, in there so you know that I'm not coming from a place of uh, just BS. You know, I really sit and, and, you know, think about these things. So I think that the reason that he uses truth, I talk about truth all the time as being sat, chit, ananda, truth, knowledge, and bliss, right? And uh, you cannot have knowledge without truth, right? And uh, if you have any uh, misconception of the truth, especially, let's say, if you're doing a scientific problem, uh, a research, and one of the variables is not true, you can't corroborate it, just try and solve it. Just like science, you're going to have to look at the entire truth, meaning that all perspectives not just can take a step back from that and kind of look look at it objectively to see it for what it is. It really is innocent people getting killed on account of a few uh, hands and barbaric in, in nature. But then you also have to look at the entire picture and go scope beyond that and look at where this all stems from. And then you look at the you know, the entire situation, I think, and that's so relevant in what he's saying, especially in today's world where the people, even though we have social media, we have the internet, a lot, a lot of people will take the time to look up the history of things 
and to find out where something originated from. Very few people do, and they're called conspiracy theorists, you know, and then they're called crazy. And it's, and as Dave Chappelle said, it's very dismissive when you call someone crazy or, you know, uh, conspiratorial in any way because you're kind of invalidating anything, their perspective, you know, as well as anything related to that area, which we know that anything that they call a conspiracy is something that they're trying to hide. It's been proven over and over again. You know, uh, God forbid anything bad happens to anyone, but we know the history of, uh, of this same type of uh, situation. If we look at the history of, of all the countries, you know, especially America, Europe, and now the Middle East being, uh, you know, intertwined in this whole, whatever this is, you know, this matrix of evil, you know, if you want to call it that. But um, let's hear what else he has to say. I just have to point that out, that he did make spiritual and scientific uh, ways of looking at it. And pointing. he's kind of doing something that uh, Bassem Yusuf did. Bassem Yusuf is just, you know, even I consider uh, Obama to be a pretty smart guy and pretty intelligent and great in the way he expresses himself. But I really look at uh, Bassem Yusuf as a, a, a rebel rouser, and you know, meaning that he's, you know, he's he stood up against the giants, and he said, "No, you have to look at it from this point of view." But he did it in such an eloquent way, and in such a way that you were able to actually feel it. And I think that most people that are, uh, let's say, not phased, and they can't feel anything, you know, or desensitized, so they can't feel anything that that people are saying about this war, about these young innocent children dying, then there's a problem right there in society that has to be addressed, you know. But uh, let's go a little bit further and look and see what's going on here. All right. I'm curious myself to know what happens next year, what he says next year. During my presidency, to move this forward as hard as I tried, I've got the scars to prove it. But there's a part of me that's still saying, well, was there something else I could have done? That's the conversation we should be having. Not just looking backwards, but looking forward. And, and that can't happen if we are confining ourselves to our outreach. I would rather see you out there talking to people, including people who you disagree with. If you genuinely want to change this. I agree 100%. That's what I said in my other videos. I'm like, if you have discourse, and people start talking about it, you will eventually find a solution that will be nonviolent. But they keep the conversation one-sided. They do that purposely. So you can't start a conversation to help this problem. And they've done this all throughout the past with the Native Americans, with the Indians in India, with the British, everywhere that the British uh, colonized, they did the same thing. Everything was about information and the spread of information. Um, that's something that if you control that you control the reality of the situation of what people believe and i think that youtube and facebook and all these other big platforms you know what what gets me is that these people have money power everything you can think of but they still fear the common voice they fear the common voice a voice of truth and that shows you who the real cowards are anybody that doesn't want a free speech uncensored that we can have a right to our opinions and if we don't have that we're living under a gestapo we're living under a dictatorship you know that's what we're living under and people don't realize that look we have all these other freedoms that we can talk about as long as we don't talk about our rights and talk about human rights then we'll be fine you know just go on and keep looking at at all the bullshit that you look at on tv and eat all the shit food that they give you all the fast food and just forget about what's going on. Don't think about it. Just watch it on TV. We don't need your opinion. That's basically what they're saying. But hopefully there are good people out there that see the relevance like Obama and other people. Well, people specifically in the institutions of uh, social media and things like this that will allow us to be a voice. You know, a voice of many can be a voice from the collective um, mass consciousness of all the people is so powerful that you can stop wars you know and they, they they know that they realize that you know so power to the people and you've got to figure out how to speak to somebody on the other side oh man all right, all right. 
Uh, you know, I don't even want to hear what this guy has to say, but I'll listen to it. Let's see. Okay, lots to say. If anybody wants to know why I viscerally hate Barack Obama, that's actually probably the best clip because. It I can tell you why you viscerally hate Obama. Look at the look at his face. First of all, yeah, I always point that out, and some people point that I'm Indian. He looks like he's Indian too, and sounds psychotic. And Jetty sounds Indian as well, but he looks like one of those. <laughs> Like, there used to be, back in the day, a lot of African-American people just started getting into media, and they started looking and sounding exactly like that. They had their face and mouth and everything <laughs> just like that, and they would be kissing ass like crazy, you know, to the powers that be. <laughs> and I think he's just trying to move his way up in the ranks, you know. Anyway, let me go. Let me quit being a jackass, sorry. You could look at it one way, and this is how most liberals do. They're like, what an eloquent man. He's able to summarize the both sides and bring it so holistically. Nuanced. It's so nuanced. A, it's not nuanced. But B, he literally was the president. He had the power. He actually, at one point, had the ability to change these circumstances. And he hemmed and he hawed and he did exactly what you talked about previously. He's like, well, you know, it's like, we just, my hands were tied and all of this. And mm -hmm. there's so many different things. You know, it's kind of... Uh, ridiculous that this guy or anybody can talk about what the president actually goes through when that stuff is all kept in secret. Look, if we know the history of America and what they've done to presidents that disobey their orders, John F. Kennedy, may I point anything else out to you? <laughs> that was done on live TV. You know, they, they blew that man's head off in front of his wife and his, the entire world watching. So you have to be an idiot to not realize that when he says that if his hands were tied, you don't know exactly if that was literally or if that was figuratively. And who knows if it was both. We don't know exactly, you know, what happened. But we do know that pre presidents and other officials, you know, uh, in the White House or in politics, literally, a lot of them have a history of getting into, into some kind of violent uh, confrontation with someone because, you know, we have people that uh, don't want to allow another perspective, you know? You know, from the Middle East and so many other policies that he pursued that actually did help us uh, get to where we are right now. It's funny, you could look at it from a right angle and a left angle, actually, to give uh, both the pathways to creating this situation. But most important... This is the problem I think that they have, is that too many people have this right and left, and the human mind and the scope, the spectrum of societal... Uh, outcomes and opinions, perspectives, is so much more than just a duality. You know, I hate to say this, but <laughs> I'm going to use the word prism, which is better than using the word rainbow, <laughs> because yeah, that'll go into a whole other realm. But there is a prism, there's a spectrum, uh, is another good word there, that of, of uh, the opinions and the, the different perspectives of society that you block out when you only have a left and a right you know, and this duality, this way of thinking in only dual terms, I think is defeating a lot of progress that could be made within any uh, any society. Importantly, that is such a helpless and a feckless way to look at it because it takes power away from basically every person who is involved in the situation. And so that is why I, I truly despise Barack Obama, because in my opinion, he was smart enough to know better. And he was a good enough politician to actually try and to change some of these systemic problems. And he talked very eloquently. You know, it's so funny how he just nonchalantly says that you're talking about a situation that no one in the entire world could figure out. And it's gone on for over 70 years. On top of that, look at, the, look at all the rest of the countries that have been affected by the United Nations and the United States itself and, and also Europe. You know, the idea of colonization came out of, uh, of Europe from uh, England. You know, the colonizers, and they went there, from there to America and all over the, the world, even got Chinese. And you know, then they had uh, Egypt, uh, the area, I think it was Egypt and, uh, and what's now known as... Uh, Israel, and they put Israel there in 1948, you know, after they basically slaughtered everybody. Israel here for you. And uh, they have a tendency of occupying, of using occupation and also uh, a form of, of uh, I want to say, because we have uh, gentrification here, or it could be in, in any society, in, in, in any neighborhood, but I think this was an international form of gentrification that was 
basically sanctified by a group of, you know, I don't want to say white supremacists, but people that have that similar ideology. And they don't ever like to talk about that, you know. About mm-hmm. 2006 mm-hmm. to 2008, and by 09, basically just washed his hands, gave up, and now he's an Instagram president. Him and his wife are Netflix brands. They're not even human beings now yeah. at this point. This is a perfect. Tell me who, which person does not fucking use the social media. You know, he's he's on social media right now, dumbass. <laughs> and I'm sure he's got an Instagram and a Facebook and everything else example this is calibrated to keep his netflix deal and his dumbass national park series not to actually do anything that's what is that's the guiding north star of his life at this point yeah mr uh content creator personal brand dude has a lot of gall to yeah. be castigating the tiktok activists mm-hmm. for uh not presenting a wholesome picture to his right. liking and that was the problem i mean i have a million things to say i can only imagine being married to a woman like that that you could tell that's her whole sentiment, is that she's gonna fight you to the fucking end about everything. About this, but that was the part that to me was the most enraging and also the most classic Obama. Rather than, you know, digging in on what you could have done when you were president, which he gives a nod, oh, I think about maybe what could I have done different. But really the problem is all of you people out there on TikTok, and maybe you need to just get out there and talk to someone who disagrees with you. Or maybe, Barack Obama, you could get on the phone to your buddy, Joe Biden, and actually exert some influence on someone who has some real power to change the situation rather than just lecturing young people about being on TikTok. I mean, that's the part that's so irritating to me, is he says, he has this quote, you have to admit that all of us are complicit mm. to some degree. It's like you it's like, more than us. But. Actually, um, you know, the idea of being complicit is definitely something that's real because if there's something that's happening a crime that's happening let's say a crime of the international proportions the human rights uh, violation like what's happening in uh gaza right now the they're trying to say just to set the record straight here they're trying to say that everything started on october 7th everybody knows differently everybody knows the truth that it didn't start on october 7th that they're just using that as a as a timeline so they can kind of do whatever they're doing right now and and uh, have people watching and and this way mentally when you're watching this if we know the origin of it supposedly supposed origin is october 7th it kind of keeps people in the current event that's continuation that's continue continuing to go on so people are going to be involved consistently in it that's the only reason it's a psychological uh, way of looking at it so anything she says i'm not going to take you know too much look too much into it Maybe, <laughs> but only one of us was president of the United yeah. States for eight years, okay? So, and only one of us is besties with the current president of the United States, by the way. Again, this annoys me. I'm sorry, guys, but it really annoys me. The reason it annoys me is that these people are both journalists in some way or another, and they're both basically, you know, on social media, on YouTube, doing their thing. Uh, I am as well, but I'm not putting other people down for it, no matter what position they held before YouTube. The whole future of the world will probably be moving into this area. So I don't know how much more they can complain about anybody being a content creator when they're doing the same thing themselves or working for one at least, you know. Um, Again, I want to reiterate that when they keep saying that Obama could have done something more and this and that, you're talking about, they're not even looking at the idea of, of, of him being the first black president in a country that lynched enslaved enslaved people like him for hundreds of years so she's not looking at the implication of that there for, to him just being at that level was an accomplishment alone in this type of environment here in america so to try and and rattle that cage just a little bit more or to put anything else more weight on top of him would have been ridiculous i think he did a great job for the time that he was here I don't know, it's, uh, it's ridiculous that people uh, can't see these little uh, details that are so important. Hey, so perhaps some of us are more complicit than others of us. 
That's one. That's the part that like most enrages me. The other thing is, it's just so classic Obama too. It's the same like red state, blue state mm -hmm. formulation, you know, where he has to go out of his way to. It's classic nuance trolling too. Like this is like the definition of nuance trolling. Which listen, no one is gonna deny the history is complex. Let me tell you, they're so fucking good at coming up with different uh, words for things that never had any meaning before. Nuance trolling. You know, um, you know, define that shit exactly so that people know exactly what, uh, you know, what it is that you're talking about. If you're talking about that it's misleading and he's not getting to the point, you know, and uh, he's, he's using using it, all these other things to talk about to try to go around the point, just say that in general. Not everybody's going to know what nuanced trolling means. There are a million podcasts that I recommend you listen to or books you can read to really understand the ins and outs of the deals that were crafted and rejected and who rejected them and why and how we got to this, you know, strange situation to begin with. And, you know, the all the un events that unfolded, there's no doubt that that is all very complex. But also the current situation is actually not that complex. The immediate situation is there is mass civilian death. Huge Okay, I love how she just said that it's not that complex. Meanwhile, it's been over 70 years and they still have no way of changing the situation and it's getting worse. Who is this fucking idiot? Excuse my language. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry about that, YouTube. I have to somehow try to block that out. But I kind of get it. <laughs> I know they're going to be upset and I apologize, YouTube. Sometimes they get emotional, but that sounds really stupid what she just said. You know? Huge indiscriminate bombing and the risk of a of a huge regional, if not world war on the table. Those pieces are actually not complex. I don't need you to nuance troll over that. I don't need you to. That's not complex. So, you, so you're saying basically that none of the people that are in charge right now are, are, are all the people that are working on this right now. And the ability to create strategy against all these different aspects. She must not know what she's talking about. I want to say another word, but she must not know what the F she's talking about. Because the complexity of the situation is what's at hand. It's not something that you can just, you know, turn on and off. It's not a duality. And I think a lot of these people from this generation here think that life is just a simple, dualistic, you know, uh, uh, natural order. And it's not. It's so much more complex than that. There's so many different dimensions uh, involved in what's happening today. And you have to take every part of it every perspective into consideration and this is going back you know to using a scientific perspective you know where you have to use all the different um possibilities or probabilities of what can happen different axioms right uh this way you can put them to the test empirically you want to put these things to the test empirically uh once you have your uh your arguments ready and uh you have different points that you want to make different assumptions axioms and then you, you test them each, uh, I guess, in an orderly fashion and uh, with whatever conditions that you want to preset to each one. And then you come up with a, a solution. And if they, if you have multiple axioms or mul multiple things on the table and you test them all and they all come out and say the same thing, then there must be something to it, you know? Uh, let's see what she says wring your hands about how difficult and how complex it is, etc. Because actually, some of the both geostrategic pieces here and the moral pieces are very, very clear. Um, so that's why I find all of that. Okay, she says geostrategic pieces and the moral pieces. Now, if people understand the word geo, they're talking about some part of the earth, and she's using the word geostrategic. So the places that she could just say where everything is just located. You don't have to use words that the entire populace is not going to understand. You know, it doesn't make any sense. People are watching all these podcasts and all these broadcasts. You can't use all these, you know, large, complex words to try to explain simple shit like it's located right here on the planet. <laughs> just say that, you know. And then the moral uh, uh, relevance of it all, of course, it's a moral issue. It's a huge moral issue. It's a uh, human rights violation, you know, but it has some... some so irritating and so enraging. You're and, in irritating and enraging. And this man never pops up to do anything useful whatsoever. Mm. The only thing he really cares about is like burnishing his own legacy and trying to preserve his own legacy. That's already done, sweetie. 
You know, from the day he became president, that's already done. I don't know where you're getting the fire in your eyes from, but it's definitely not from that situation. That's some deep-seated hatred inside you. But in terms of actually, like, pushing policy or pushing the very powerful people that he has tons of sway with in any sort of positive direction, he's got nothing to say. That sounds like a little girl that doesn't know anything about politics, doesn't know anything about international politics and human rights, and is only talking from a perspective of something you do in Hollywood. You know, it's, it's not it's not uh, what you know, it's who you know. And if you can get those people, influence them. I mean, how basic and elementary is her understanding of the situation? I hope she's not running for president because that would be a sad day. Say about Everything that. he said is technically true. It's like, yeah, it is technically true that you can't have a full picture on TikTok. It is technically true that everyone at some point, or every U.S. policymaker, I would say, is. I would argue I would I've not seen say some TikToks Americans. that were more illuminating than what he just said right there. Sure. I, I mean, he <laughs> okay, he's a great example of what happens to men when they get introduced to women like that, that don't realize that they're women, and he's trying hard to fit into the whole white, uh, you know. Um, stereotypes that they are not stereotypes the white uh class system that they have set up it's almost like a caste system so it's very similar to india so he understands it so he's doing what every other person of color talk, does you talk like this and we kind of you know <laughs> sorry <laughs> but he's trying to get laid is what it is and she's not a bad looking chick i get it i totally get it so he's gonna be as white as possible look i did that shit too when i was younger there was a point where i did that too i get it i totally get it dude He's like, you can't tell the whole picture. You can't uh, get both. I agree. I mean, I agree that much of uh, modern online discourse is cancerous, but I also am always reminded that uh, that discourse is equally cancerous. And it's a uh, helplessness. It's a powerlessness. It's the ability to try and assuage the feelings of liberals without actually doing anything. Mm -hmm. That was uh, the tr If you want to really know what he invented more than anything, it was that. It was the celebrity president, the man who does nothing. Um, and you often hear that. You're like, he was the most... <laughs> these guys are talking from such ignorance um thank god i was born here and grew up the way i did even though it was tough but it gave me a lot more knowledge than these these uh you know college uh, well i'm college educated too but <laughs> but these guys that go to these you know ivy league schools um you know and they graduate and they come out with degrees and a lot of them you know don't have anything genuine to offer to the world you know it's everything that they've learned and that's it and like I said, the complexity behind uh, being the president and also him being a celebrity. <laughs> you don't understand anything about America if you're using the t these terms and the way you're using, you're using them. John F.K. was one of the biggest celebrities during his time because he was president. But that also made him a marked man and a target. Obama being black and having influence and power makes him even more of a target because we know what the central essence of this country uh, is infused with, you know? And we know that there's a white supremacist uh, ideology that created the Constitution of America until black people started to change that. So these guys that are coming from India and all, all of these places that are acting like this guy, I mean, it's shameful as an Indian for me to watch this and see so many of these Indian guys falling into this into this pattern, you know? But I get it, when you're that age, you know, you're, um, full of lust and full of hormones and you know you, you do anything at that point you sell your own soul you know just to uh you know get a piece of the action you know so most eloquent president we ever had and it's always like is that eloquence? Because real eloquence, real power, was the ability to combine rhetoric and the actual like force behind it to the force of action. From right. Ward. What the fuck does all that mean? Combine rhetoric to the force of it, to the force of action. <laughs> Put that on paper and make a formula, dude. You sound smart and you look the part, but you, you, but you, the, you know when you break it down, it doesn't sound very intelligent. It just sounds like you putting on a mockery of someone that's actually intelligent. That's all it looks like right now and to translate into something. He never actually mastered the second part, but we are all so uh... what are you talking about? So what's the second part? He never mastered I have all the abuse and all the things that the, that the white racist America threw at him. Some really, really uh, mind-bending shit that they said about him and his wife and his family. And you have to understand that, that that alone and the history of that is what's impactful. That's called trauma. Okay? And and that trauma is, is uh, not just his. It's the entire 
it's all the people here, including the people that created the trauma. So there's a there's a lot of trauma here in America that they have to deal with. So you kind of miss those points. You're speaking from a perspective of, like I said, you know, someone that graduated from college and, you know, knows a few things here and there, but you can't seem to put it in order and to understand the depth of what this really is because you're speaking from a very, very uh, shallow area of, of, of uh, what the actual uh, problem is. You know, it's not Obama. It's people like you. You know, we're also anxious to be led by such a great man that we're willing to just, like, forget what real leadership is supposed to look like. Anyway, I can go on for... <laughs> Yeah, go on. Tell us what real leadership is, is uh, you know, looks like, and and g give us an example. The only time I think that I can say that uh, the country was in good hands, I think, was with uh, John F. Kennedy. But look at the outcome of that. You know, you're not taking that in, into consideration. You know, you're not looking at the reality of what could happen. You know, so you're saying, "Oh, do this, do that," because you're president. No, it doesn't work that way. If you see, there's there's a clip with. Uh, Bill Hicks, one of my, when I was doing comedy, Bill, Bill Hicks was, because I lived in Houston as well, and I also lived in Brooklyn, but Houston, when I was growing up there, Bill Hicks uh, was hated by America, but loved by the world, and, and uh, he said something about, uh, as a joke that he does, he says, imagine, you know, one day the president, you know, he gets, he gets, you know, uh, voted into, into office, and he finally gets the first day at the job, he goes in, they sit him down, and they just say, okay, turn off the lights, and then he, he sees, you know, as he's being sworn in, you know, this is what happens after he gets sworn in. They show him this video and it's a perspective that no one has ever seen of the president getting assassinated. And he goes, do you, now do you understand? So that, that's why I love Bill Hicks is that, you know, we don't know, but it's as outlandish and as crazy as that sounds. The great Mark Twain said the truth is stranger than fiction. You know, and uh, I believe that because that's the name of my comic book by TSP Rav Shiva. That's the name that I go by. And it's called The Truth is Strangers in Fiction. And if you can check my comic book out on there as well. But I just I like to plug myself because I, I see other people doing it. So I'm like, all right, let me plug myself all in there. Perfect timing. That was a pretty good uh, transition right there, wouldn't you say? But uh, all right, let's see what this fool has to say. Forever, as people can see, uh, this is something that sticks deep for me um, with uh, Barack Obama, and it's good to see absolutely nothing has changed on his front. Mm. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com. Yeah, that video was okay. You know, it wasn't that bad, but you guys really need to not, you know, I wouldn't say go to school because you already went to school. You need to live a little bit before you talk. And, to, and, it, and one of the ways of doing that is studying the history of what black people had to overcome and still have to overcome in this country. And to understand the depth of why so many people around the world are seeing the Palestinians as being uh, in a situation that is completely unfair to them. You know, no one in their right mind would say that that situation of watching so many children get killed and uh, so many innocent people getting killed and, and not getting any supplies. And I mean, the situation horrible is horrible. And uh, it's definitely a human rights violation as far as I'm concerned. I think that, that Israel needs to re-strategize and also realize that, again, I'm going to say what Einstein said, is that if you continue to do something and you're expecting a different result, but you keep getting the same result, but you keep doing it anyway, that means you are insane. So using violence on both sides, whether it's Hamas or whether it's uh, Israel, and for 70 years of going through, that's a long time of being insane on both parties. That's what I'm saying, you know, and there has to be something that they can do to elevate their minds, uh, their bodies and their souls and to get out of the situation. Look guys, I'm about nonviolence, all right? And uh, I, I, I really think that people need to uh, be kinder and more compassionate to each other. Christ said, you know, it's, it's it's really, I think the road to salvation is the way we treat each other. I really do. The more I look at it, because that seems to be where the problems and the issues start. And it turns into a war that ends into genocide and other horrible things. But um, I'll leave you with that. Like I said, I don't subscribe to, re uh, to religion, you know. I, I do believe in spirituality and, and understanding and compassion and forgiveness. These are the things that I, I see that's pulling me out of my situation. And I've been in some real shit. But <laughs> that's another story. But guys, I'll see you in the next video. Um, getting kind of tired now. 
And I uh, will talk to you guys soon. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, hopefully all will be well and everybody stays safe. All right, guys. Bye-bye.